Sing me a love song. Sing me a love song. Jonathan Butler tours with contemporary jazz greats like Dave Cause and Patty Austin, a far cry from his formative years in South Africa. We grew up very poor. I mean, you know, there were days that, you know, we either would live on potatoes for a week or, you know, that's a luxury. Um, and, you know, we got used to asking for food next door. I just wanted to help my, my mother and my father uh, so that we can eat. Jonathan Butler found out early. His gift for music was the way he could help. My first performance was, you know, I'm probably six years old or something, and I'm singing, you know, Tom Jones is my, my Delilah. And I get a fall on my knees, and, you know, people chuck a whole lot of money. You know, it's a customary thing in Africa. You know, people, they like your singing or whatever. They throw money on the stage. So I knew that was my uh, destiny. Jonathan Butler's destiny arrived even before he was a teenager. When he was 12 years old, he was signed to a recording contract. I was signed to Zomba in South Africa when I was 12 years old. 12? 12, yeah. And I had my first hit record. It was a Burt Bacharach song, Please Take. And it went to number two in the pop charts. So I became the first black person to be played on white radio stations in South Africa. Is that and right? So, Burt Bacharach song. Yeah, and you know, it just, my, the popularity and the fame was spread so fast. This is Please Stay. Remember the one I told you about? Please oh, Stay? Yeah. Uh, Please Burt Stay. Burt Burt Bacharach. Yeah. When I was t 13, I think. Jonathan's early fame only left him empty. Nobody loved me. You know, they loved the fact that I made them money. You know, it was, it was good for my, for my family to see me give them money every, every time I do a concert. But me, Jonathan, had great need. Love, uh, attention, Jonathan turned to drugs to cope. I was a drug addict. I was uh, at really? 15. Yeah, I was. F I started at 14, like 14 years old. Hard drugs. So by the time, yeah, by the time I was 18, uh, you know, I, I didn't do needles and stuff like that. But I mean, I, uh, I was definitely gone. I was on another level with, with drugs and you know, smoking marijuana and you know, I mean, 24 hours a day. I didn't like food. I just drank coffee and got high. That was it. And played my guitar t 10 hours a day. I didn't leave the house, didn't leave the room. One day the phone rang, and Jonathan's life changed forever. He called me one day, and he said, I'm your number one fan. Jesus loves you. He died for you. John 3.16, the whole bit. You'd never heard that? Never, you know, and I never heard, never met him. He said, look, I found, got your number through a friend of mine, and I've been a fan of yours since I was 12 years old. I, Blah, 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 Jesus died for you. You know, can I come and speak to you about him? And this young man pursued me. I mean, really pursued me. And I finally met with him and we talked. And, and I was still being very, you know, angry about, hey man, come on, don't talk to me about angels with blonde hair and blue eyes. Come on, man. Jonathan grew up in an era when apartheid violently separated blacks from whites in South Africa. Since Jonathan saw Jesus as a white man, salvation was a hard concept for him to swallow. I didn't really want to hear about Jesus, you know, when you're seeing army vans shooting people and young kids on your street. I had such a anger towards the system, and uh, I didn't want to serve a Jesus or a, that had blonde hair and, uh, and on the streets of people are being killed. So I had such a very warped, I had a different mindset at the time about church and religion. Jonathan's fan simply would not give up. He invited me to a coffee bar, like a youth meeting. And there were young people my age, 18 years old, talking about Jesus. And um, in this meeting, this lady preached on suicide, and uh, I realized that was my, I was on that mission, you know. And I gave my heart to Christ that night. I said, listen, how can I receive Christ? And so, you know, they led me to, through prayer and showed me a completely a different face of Christ and you know what I mean yeah. and what the love of God really is all about got delivered that night from drugs from anger from depression instantaneously instantaneously oh come on I mean, that, that takes time doesn't it that takes time but that was instantaneously I woke up the next morning with a hunger to eat because I could smell again falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever done. 
Jonathan not only accepted Jesus more than 20 years ago, he married the sister of the fan who led him to Christ. He recently cut his first gospel CD and continually works to show Christ to the secular jazz world. God has placed me in an environment to meet all these people and I believe to be a witness. And, and I don't mean to Bible bash them over the head, you know, hey man, you're going to hell if you light that cigarette, you know. Or, you know, it, God has given me uh, the grace and the capacity to love because, I mean, that's what I lacked when I was growing up. You can influence people and make them see that Christ in you Give Jesus a chance, you know. Give Christ a chance. I mean, you have really nothing to lose but everything to gain by giving Christ a chance.